Alright, so it's happening. I put a question on next door to see if anyone had any free mulch or soil. Someone replied, and we're gonna go scoop up some mulch now. So it's happening, guys. Garden time. Here we go. We brought some buckets. Look at this compost pile. Free compost. And that stuff in there it has a lot of worms and it has a lot of good, good, rich composted material. Is this good cat, this stuff? I think so. Yeah, it's beautiful. A nice little round we had. There's definitely more where that came from. Okay, so this is gonna be my before footage. I have to do it real quick before I finish. I got really into it already. I think it's gonna look great. So I'm gonna mulch quite a bit of this and see how good it looks. Okay, well that wasn't too bad. And I moved these big flowers here. I was able to cover quite a bit. I think it looks better. I went back and got more mulch. Check out all my pineapples. There's some more pineapples back here. I think it looks way better than this was before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright y'all, I'm really happy with the results. Turned out really good. Yeah. Um, let's see here, we got, we got some salvia, cosmos, cosmos are gorgeous, we got some marigold, which are edible, rosemary, these blanket flowers, which they seem to love, just delightful lavender here, beautiful thing of lavender. Um, I think these are daisies, and these are some of my favorite things. So this is a community garlic. You can actually eat these flowers, and they taste like garlic. And I actually grew this one at home. This is okra. Look at this beautiful flower here. So we got some good stuff going in the garden. Here's the plan. We're going to take a whole row like this, like this, we're gonna make this the garden bed, a big long garden bed. We took this old border and reclaimed it and upcycled it into this awesome new garden bed. Check out my moringa here too. We harvested some moringas. I can't wait to see this come together. So I got this lemongrass from my mom yesterday and I'm going to plant that in my yard because cats love lemongrass. You can only give them like a little bit at a time but they love to chew it. So now every time I go out in the garden and I come back inside they kind of expect me to have like a blade of lemongrass ready for them. So as you guys can see I don't have a very big yard. I mean I can go that way along the wall and stuff still but I don't have a very big yard. I do a lot of container gardening and then I start babies here and then I take it to new places like Pete's brother's house or my mom's or my brother's and all this here I worked on yesterday. Planted some basil, flowers, nasturiums, shard, lettuce, and over here I've got like lychees, nonis, I've even got jungle peanuts planted some blueberries and this is a really cool find I got elderberries um, I pulled up some elderberries from Pete's brother's house so hopefully they'll come back they're a little sad right now they'll come back that was just yesterday 
So my goal is to just put this in a pot until I find a spot for it. So there it is. We used to have one right here. It was pretty big. It was right by the door. And lemongrass is just so useful. You can use it in tea. You can use it in cooking. Um, so it's useful for us too, not just the kitties. Got a pretty rose here. They smell so nice. Got these zenas. These are really fun. They attract bees. And I reuse seeds that they make and I put them in the ground so those right there I think I've said this in a video before but those are seeds just stick them in the ground somewhere they'll come out that's how these came out of nowhere and I'm excited for my plumeria here also known as frangipangi they're coming back this one got nice and big and my new community garlic. These flowers, you guys, they're edible and they taste like garlic and onion. And I got a new cage for one of my tomatoes here. Look at the yellow, orangey tomatoes. They're already almost ready. You gotta get like a trellis or a cage because they get heavy so you can keep them up. And here's the other rose. Look how tall this one is. These are like mini roses and this shot just straight up. I've got some beans climbing. It's like a micro garden, you know? It's so cute. And my friend gave me some arugula seeds. And look, this is all arugula, so I can just munch on it and just toss a few on a meal or whatever. It grows so fast and they kind of practically reseed themselves because they get to flower like this. These are the first flowers I've had though. And then they seed, reseed, and you can just have a nice little patch of arugula anytime. Mm. So good. So that's my little baby garden tour for now. I'll show you guys more later. Ooh, look at these shadows, they're weird. So we're off to go back and get some more mulch because my garden is looking weedy. <laughs> I'm feeling weedy. We gotta go back and get some more mulch because my garden looks a little bit like we messed up. We couldn't choke the grass out as well as we thought we could. So we have to rake it up, pull the weeds out, pull the grass that's growing through the mulch now. We just gotta pull that out and re-mulch it, get some more mulch, make it thicker, and I think we'll be good. So, we'll progress every day little by little. You just, you know, chip away at it, drink some matcha, get really hyped and just get it done. Hey guys, I probably have the nastiest shoes on the planet, but um, they're not stinky, surprisingly, right? They don't stink, they're just dirty, but they're perfect for gardening. So look at the weather, guys. It's gonna rain, I think. So I don't know how much more gardening we can do for today, but we will just keep working until it rains. So we came back home because we needed a little matcha fix. I had to use the bathroom. And it was on the way to the destination anyway. So we used the Ninja to whip up the matcha with the milk, which is, of course, coconut milk. And we used a little bit of maple syrup. And then we're just kind of heating it up. So that's our way of making matcha without that fancy bamboo whisk. So yeah, matcha time. So there's a bit of space to work with at a family member's house. And we have about 6 foot by 30 foot. So we're gonna just go ahead and pull out all the grass and fix the area, make it prepared for the soil that's coming in tomorrow. I think it's like um, compost, potting mix, and what was the other mixture? So it's like a topsoil that's like, actually topsoil, uh, compost, and potting mix mixture. So they're gonna put it like on a big tarp and we're gonna just scoop it where we need it. So. Hey, Leela. Oh, yeah, by the way, I used the cat tree. Some... <laughs> what? They're not putting it in a big tarp. Okay, well, we're just going to put it on the ground somewhere. Doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and um, prepare the bed today and make it nice and right and um, get a bunch of seeds going. I already have a bunch of seeds going here that I plan on moving over there, so it's really exciting to see this all come together. Um, I hope it inspires you guys to make a garden bed or just create a little space, start a herb garden, or just start potting, uh, container gardening, um, because I really think it's wonderful and healthy and you help reconnect to nature. And 
Leela's tail is just the cutest. Yeah, I'm just, as I was saying, I use this cat tree here because it's good lighting by the window. I just put my phone down and vlog. So what I plan on doing is a square foot gardening. It's really, really interesting. You kind of like take some strings and make a grid with the strings over the topsoil. And it kind of helps give you a guide. Like you can work with one square foot space at a time. You can put a plant in the middle. Um, you can put like nine lettuces, you know, just kind of spreading it out. I saw a really awesome tutorial on this. So I'm actually impressed by it because I want to plant as much as I can in a small amount of space without overcrowding the plants and make a lot of crop happen. Won't take that crop from you. All right, so the matcha is made and we are on our way to the garden. Malila! Here is us. The shirt is soaked. Shirts are soaked. Hands are dirty. Getting blisters up in here. We're getting dirty over here, guys. 30 foot by six foot. We're mulching it, pulling out the weeds, preparing the bed for soil tomorrow, and lots of cute plants and vegetables and fruits and berries and herbs. Yeah, grow a garden, they said. <laughs> Look at us. Well, we decided we're gonna repark our car because we pulled it to the back of the house. Um, we're gonna come to the pool. Cool off, holy crap, it's hot. We're gonna jump in the pool and cool off. Plus we're all sna snazzy here, stinky. Ugh. So, we did take a dip. It was really nice. I'm just in my clothes and pizza's sexy boxers over there. So I'm just gonna, just gonna lay down and dry and drip dry. Sorry about all the noise there. They're building something, but um, to be continued. So we are home. I'm showered and I was watering the plants and I wanted to make a fun drink. I actually have some mango and some mandarins and lemon and mint. And I'm gonna show you this really, really fun recipe that I've never made before. All right, so around these parts, you have to innovate because I don't have a mortar and pestle. So I'm using this knife sharpener because it has a nice blunt edge here that I can pulverize this with. And um, you've got some sugar, which is like the raw cane sugar and the fresh mint from the garden. And yeah, you just pretty much start going for it like that. The sugar helps kind of be like a, an abrasive an abrasive medium that helps crush your mint and release all the minty juices and goodness and you just gonna keep going until you get a nice pulp a nice sweet pulp all right so that's almost where i want it i'm just gonna keep going a little bit this is also a great base to start a mojito. It can just be a virgin mojito. It can just be just for the joy of the flavor. You don't have to put alcohol in it unless you want to. That's up to you. So right about there. So it looks like I, I minced it, right? So you didn't even have to whip out your knife or anything. You just do this step and um, save all that. Guys, that's so good. You could just like eat this. Look at that. It's shining and shimmery. So I've got this silly old lemon juicer for a long time. And I've been using it and juicing by hand. And you're just going to cut your citrus right open and give it all a squeeze. that and I guess you could just go ahead and scoop that in there too all right so like I've said I've never done this before I'm just kind of winging it um, I just kind of think that this flavor combination just sounded good all of a sudden so I kind of like to fillet my mangoes. Oh, you know what I could do? 
I could blend this. Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to blend this with some coconut water and regular water. If you don't have coconut water, it's probably fine. I filled it the rest of the way with water, and I don't know how concentrated the flavor is going to be just yet, so I'm not going to add as much water at first just to be able to gauge that after after I've combined everything for the first time. And when I fillet it, I get like everything just like that. This is how I usually do my mango. It just works out fine. And I press press down on the edges, flatten the knife against the cutting board, and it's like razor precision. You waste no mango. Let's see. Very, very nice. And then we'll just, we usually just eat the Alright, so it's super blended. It's like a really watered down smoothie. And I'm gonna combine it, just try it. Maybe it needs some ice. That's pretty well mixed. Oh yes. Oh wow, that's like... Wow. I wanna put ice cubes in that. And maybe a little more maple syrup. Or no, no. I would put one more lemon, just one more lemon, um, ice cubes, and I want to do the other mango. I just want to make more because I feel like that's enough mint. Ooh, very nice. So I'm just going to use a bigger container. I feel like this will be a better fit. So that was just the, the other mango, some water, and a lemon. And that's going to be perfect. Way better than store-bought juice. You just give that a shake. I didn't add ice, but I figured I'm just going to drink this right away. Anyway, it doesn't need to be ice cold. Alright, so here comes the test. Oh yeah, I've never made anything like this. It's so, it's like creamy, it's like nectary. It's just the right amount of sweetness. The mint is really refreshing. I like getting those pieces of mint to chew in there. And the lemon, you know, just sure packs a big punch of vitamin C. You've got all the fiber of the, the mango, you didn't lose that. That's amazing and so good, you guys. I hope you give this recipe a try. We just created it together. See, you could just really wing it and create something amazing. What do you think? Very good. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the video. I'll see you in the next video.